They've got their own launch pad launching on their launch pad. That's fun. Welcome back everybody to another 10 minute eye test. This is Sasha and Carmelo with Arcanum Ventures. And we've got a little change of pace today, I guess. Um, Carmelo, how you doing, man? Doing all right, a little bit jet lagged, but good nonetheless. How's it over in Vietnam? It's pretty good. It's hot. It's rainy. It's weird, but it's good. You know, um, I, I was, I think when we were looking at projects, um, I was surprised to see not so many AI projects anymore. And I'm wondering if WorldCoin was like the big exclamation point on like the AI hype, like the uh, the, the AI Widowmaker. WorldCoin has taken the cake, um, but we did see an interesting one, and so. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and just dive right in. I'll, I'll start the clock after I intro it, but uh, let me just show you guys what we're seeing here on crypto, right? We've got some active IDOs, IEOs, and ICOs, and I saw this one, CPAD. And um, Carmelo, you know, when you see pad, it's usually like a launch pad, right? Yep. And so we've got Pools Finance and Spores Network, and I was honestly very surprised to see a launch pad launching today. I mean, there's so many launch pads out there already. And so what's, you know, what's the special use case? What's the special access model? Um, what's the deal with the new launch pads? In fact, there are so many companies that white label launch pads, like you can buy a launch pad, I think for a few thousand dollars for your, for your like startup or something. So it's something that I want to check out. I think this would be a good one to dive into. And um, yeah, Carmelo, what do you feel like is going to be the, the differentiating factor here? Well, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to agree with what you said. Like um, you see the barren calendar right now. There's what, two and a half projects launching this week. So I don't know where the demand for more launch pads is coming from. And I also don't understand why, what is it? Pools Finance and Engine Starter, why they would agree to launch a competitor. I, I never understood that. Like. Sure, let's uh, compete with each other, but we'll, we'll help you get started. But anyways, I imagine that the only real new thing we're going to see here is that they're launching on other chains. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully they've figured out how to fix launches in the IDO niche, but I'm not really banking on much, to be honest. I, I haven't seen any launch pads that are reinventing anything. They're, they're just kind of following the same structure. So maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. You know what? I think I agree with you. Like, uh, it's we've seen we've seen launch pads launch other launch pads um, over and over again. And the I think the reason is there's like there's financial incentive. And so if they're able to capitalize on something that's hype and launch a launch pad for that hype thing, like it, wasn't there one called AI Pad? I'm pretty sure there was. Yeah, there was multiple, but I think that was. Bluezilla and all the pads, they, the 35 pads that they've launched so far, probably a few yeah. more to come. Bluezilla's large family of pads. And so, yeah, like if they can launch a, a, a hype pad, um, people are going to buy it. And maybe that's what they want. They want people to buy it. They want to create liquidity in the token supply. They want to take an exit. And so maybe we'll see that here. And you know what? Before we start reading into things, I'll go ahead and start the clock because you and I know what launch pads are. In fact, we uh, we are very familiar with the launch pad space. And Believe then, it or not, we used to work for one. <laughs> here we go. Ten minutes. All right. Um, let me dive in. CPAD is a fair and trusted launch pad platform on the SUI network that accelerates creative ideas and brings the projects to life. That's a beautiful sentence. It's very well written. I don't know. I, I was just about to say, <laughs> you lost me at trusted. What are you trusted <laughs> with? <laughs> Who trusts you? <laughs> That's like, I trust this restaurant that just opened up down the street, but they haven't served me any meals yet, but I trust them. They look friendly. I don't understand. How can you, how can a, a, a business be trusted before the business exists? <laughs> All right, so they're focusing on the SWE network, so that kind of falls in line with what we believed. Hopefully, that's not the only differentiator. Maybe I don't understand because other launch pads could launch easily on SWE network. It's not a big uh, tech ask. So unless they want to just focus solely on that, I don't think there's enough projects launching in SWE to justify its own launch pad. 
No, in fact, I, I was taking a look, like uh, coincidentally, I was taking a look at um, developer stats on SUI, and there's not a whole lot of development activity on SUI. And it seems like there's just a lot of shitcoin launches on SUI. So I don't really know yeah. what's going on there on that network. Um, I'm not really sure what this launch pad, like what need it's catering to. It's very clearly obvious that like we don't need, um, you know, more access to like launching on SUI when people are very easily able to launch their own uh, meme coins or shit coins or whatever coins on this network already. So maybe it is hype. I would, I would hope that maybe they can like, there's some cool model, maybe some like pseudo fair launch token model in this launch pad that's going to bring it some real value versus what exists on the uh, on the market if it's the same old launch pad model i'm going to be disappointed yeah me too that's a good point hopefully they i don't know caught lightning in a bottle and made some some new idea and then that will be able to transfer that over to other chains too or or somebody else can copy them but they got four launch pads supporting them which is kind of crazy so yeah. they're really eager to launch anything at this point. That that also speaks to the the barren calendar we mentioned. Like there's nothing launching right now. So launch pads are like, we'll take what we can get, even if it's something that's gonna kill us a year from now. Oh my god. And a fully diluted market cap of five million dollars at um public ground price. And I'm gonna be honest, like even even for like a launch pad in a market of launch pads, that's pretty low. That's really yeah. low. And I'm like uh they've raised 600k let's be honest they don't need that 600k to develop a launch pad they can, they can white label a launch pad for a lot less um uh, but you know now look at that market is, cap too i mean assuming i'm assuming there's no liquidity involved in that calculation but that market cap is very low that that falls in line with what we saw in that DeFi summer whatever you want to call it 2021 when everybody was trying to get that initial market cap down as much as possible to sell to investors and this kind of fell in line with like pump and dumps basically so hopefully that's not what they're going for yeah it was it was honestly like at, at one point it seemed like a challenge projects were like competing <laughs> to launch with the lowest market cap there was one that launched with like 50k market cap and just so people understand like what that strategy was if you launch with a very very low market cap then the idea is that the the token price can go up some multiple like 30, 50, 100 X to a reasonable market cap, like a, you know, a, a realistic market cap. And they can, they can chalk it up as um, like a very, very highly um, like a value accruing token. And, um, and they can also justify it by saying there's a, a massive range of price discovery. And so that's why people were doing this. Unfortunately, it like eventually turned and people got screwed because they would launch at tiny market caps and then all of a sudden it'd be like two or five X and they'd be left with like um, an entire token supply for their business of like a couple hundred K, which was very laughable and sad. Yeah, I think we've seen some that are in the f in a few thousands, like the entire market cap is like three and a half thousand dollars, which is even worse. You hate to see it. Yeah, you hate to see it. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the website and see what this is all about. And so, boom, here we go. Oh, how eye-catchingly bad that hero text is. How many times have we seen pink and purple branding, man? This is just getting old at this point. Accelerate the Web the Web 3's mass adoption. That is... I, I wish I could say that's ChatGPT generated, but it's not good enough. That's it's bad. Yeah, All right, so they're fair and trusted. They keep saying they're trusted, but I don't know who's trusting them. Unless you know they're what? the We're people that are making the money. We're yeah, who's trusting out. them? Who's trusting <laughs> CPAD? <laughs> Have they launched anything yet before they've launched? I'm trying to okay, so figure out. Check it out. Here we go. A shitty access model. We've got stake the token. So I'm assuming that this is a staking access model. And what that means is that um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with launch pad structures over the past couple of years, I guess, what launch pads would do is that they would launch a token and the token would have some like feeble justification for existing. Like for example, governance somehow. And then what would happen is that you would need to buy this token. You'd need to buy like a certain amount and stake it. 
to be able to access deals like investment opportunities. And so they're creating like a decentralized type of investment platform where you needed to access investments by buying and staking the token. And so what we're doing here is it seems, if I had to guess, maybe the same thing. Um, the problem is, is that the company is not making any revenue here from this model. Um, and so we can get a little bit more into that a, a little later, but uh, I'm going to click on this link and see if it's going to take us to a weird staking model. I mean, the company can make revenue, but the ways it does does do that is a little bit harder to figure out. Like they would have to be selling their token from their treasury to mitigate that. It, if it goes up in value, they're going to have to dump their token or they have some backroom deals with the projects that launch like you know, negotiating for tokens or part of the supply. So there are ways to make money as a launchpad, but it's hard to say that that any of that value is going to people that actually hold the token. Yeah, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to say the quiet part out loud. Actually, I was so like. Uh, Screw it. The, let's burn it to the ground. <laughs> okay, so let's just be honest here, right? Um, companies that want you to stake your tokens, how do they make money? They sell their tokens against you. They're stealing liquidity from you. They're devaluing your investment. And so that's what we've seen in launchpad models, in any staking model. Because if you think about staking, if you're staking tokens to get a service or a product or whatever, what you're doing is that you're just giving that company a loan and then you're getting your money back and then you just freely access that thing that you wanted to. And so like, how do they make money against you? They devalue your investment by selling it themselves. And so look what we got here, a tier system, boom. Oh, I'm totally not connecting my wallet to this dude. It's I don't blame me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so- You didn't have a Sui wallet? No, I don't have a Sui wallet actually. I don't know if I want to touch Sui. <laughs> um, they've got their own launch pad launching on their launch pad. That's fun. So how do they access their own launchpad without their own token? I don't know, but there's a tier system. So that helps us understand that there is some maybe staking tier system, which means the more tokens you stake, the larger investment allocation you have access to. Um, looks like you can buy the token. You can lock the token. What I'm also assuming, look, earn and staking. And so stake your tokens and then get more tokens. This is, an, this is an incentive we saw like two years ago, maybe even maybe even uh, more than two years ago. It's like, hey, we don't really have a whole lot of utility. So if you hold these tokens, we'll reward you for holding them. And why do they want you to hold those tokens? What's happening there? They want you to hold them so that you can lock them so that you don't sell them so they can sell and take the value out of the liquidity pool or the exchanges against you. So devaluing your investment, unfortunately. I mean, that's not all launch pads. It would be unfair to say that every launch pad out there is doing this, but you'd be surprised at how many are doing this. And before we go any further, if you're enjoying this content, just remember to give the video a like and even to subscribe if you feel like it. And also, this is an open challenge to any launchpads out there that want to work with some advisors and rethink the entire IDEO launch space and how we can launch projects better, more fairly for everybody. Open yes. challenge. Open challenge. Yeah. Put your money where your mouth is. And so we've got like a Google Sheets cutout here from the token supply, which is a little bit disappointing. There's a lot of tokens for investors. And then the utility. Oh. Perfect Snuck timing. up on us. <laughs> Perfect timing on the utility, right? So earn interest from staking. Platform governance. Oh, wow. When have you ever seen governance come into play? On, have on you, launch seen, bed, especially? you seen this one? It says Vote. take your tokens to earn more rewards. No, 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 no. Vote for listing projects. How many nah. times have we seen that? And it does and it does not happen. It's not a bad idea, to be honest. Though, like, imagine you're a project and you're wondering where to launch your your po project on what pad, and you're you have a community clamoring for a certain project, and you say you don't even have to like 
tell the project anything like our community is dying to buy your token do you want more people do you want to give them more access like if that works it works well but i haven't seen anybody doing it or pulling it off successfully and it's well, definitely not governance you don't need governance for that you just need people in a, a telegram group shouting <laughs> i mean i i want to go back to like uh you know we've we've seen that utility on a number of different launch pads and the issues with it is that it's difficult to find a community of like really informed investors in the launchpad space. Um, a lot of it is driven by hype. There might be misaligned uh, incentives like, you know, users might want to launch like the absolute worst projects because it, it will give them some form of returns based on hype. That can damage the company's reputation, but at the same time, Launching a token on a launch pad is not easy. It takes a lot of operational resources and logistics and coordinating. And so, you know, if a lot of times launch pads will line up the schedule month, months in advance to, to launch a token. And so that's very difficult to do if you've got, you know, a big community of investors in your token saying, I want to launch this or I want to launch that. It's like, well, we've got to coordinate all that. We can't do that logistically. And so, this is one of the big reasons why we've we've seen that utility a number of times. We've never actually seen it done. And so good it's luck. It's not just to you. that. Imagine you got a small launch pad and they're like, we want to launch Aptos. And Aptos gets that information. And they're like, cool. Congratulations. Join the, <laughs> join the line. Like everybody wants to launch us right now. So it doesn't necessarily do a whole lot of good unless it still takes people, real people working for the team, the operations team to like coordinate with them. And to ask them and, and plan it if they even want to do that. So, yeah, it's, it, there's a whole lot that goes into it besides governance and token holders. But going back, just focusing on the important matter, like governance, you don't need governance. You don't need an on-chain governance system to ask the community. It's as simple as putting up a Twitter or a Telegram poll in your group. Like, you don't, let's not pretend that this is a huge utility need. It, it seems like they're they're grasping at straws for utility for this token staking they lost me at staking to be honest but i wanted to give them a fair shake and take a look at what other utilities they might have but it's your typical staking access model with tiers not a whole lot of new things going on right now i think it was it confirms our fear that this is just the same old launchpad structure maybe it's white labeled and it just happens to be built with SWE in mind and maybe a few other newer networks so yeah, I think this is uh, the first hard no uh, I, we've had in a in a few months. Like a definite no. I don't need to look more. Sorry, All CPAD. Right. Nothing personal. Is that the verdict? For Straight me, it's the verdict. Night? I'm not going to speak yeah. for you. I know. I know you love your launch pads. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, take it easy there. Um, I think I want to. I want to dive. Uh, look, it's a no for me. But I want to dive into why it's a no, and let me tell you why it's a no. Because launch pads, in my opinion, this might trigger some people, are ineffective. Um, you, what, what the purpose of a launch pad is essentially is to crowdsource a community of investors and give them investment opportunities that they like and they want to participate in. And unfortunately, what we've seen in every single launch pad is that it turns into like a degenerate den of people that are complaining and whiny and self-interested and not at all interested in the actual projects, technology startups that are being launched. They're more interested in favorable exit terms and pumping and dumping. And this unfortunately dictates the direction that the launch pad goes in because the launch pad's nothing without their community because launch pad gains customers they gain uh, projects to launch tokens based on their community because tokens or founders want access to that community. And so if there is no community, there's no business. And so it's this like chicken and egg situation that just devolves into something really awful. At the same time, we haven't seen any good tiered or fair launch-esque launchpad models to prevent whale transition. So what you end up happening is that you have a lot of people that are there early or they have a lot of money, they invest a lot and they end up controlling everything in a year because they gain a lot of tokens. They have a big voice and guess what happens if they own a ton of tokens, 
and they threaten to dump those tokens, they can completely screw up your platform or ecosystem. And so, unfortunately, Launchpads listen to these people. So this is why it's a no for me. Launchpad models are broken, and I don't think they're going to be fixed anytime soon unless they bring in some innovation. And I'm not seeing anything innovative here. That's my very uh, bitter old man controversial take. Yeah, I tend to agree. But it would be an exciting challenge to tackle if we had more time. But we don't. So I guess launch pads are going to have to struggle for now. And we're going to have to see some more uh, half-baked pads launching on new chains. So whenever there's a new chain, speaking of new chains, there's Coinbase launched the new chain uh, recently. So maybe there's going to be a base pad. Who knows? <laughs> I hope I hope not. <laughs> I hope there's a base pad and I wonder like I hope Coinbase releases a statement saying like we are in no way affiliated with base <laughs> pad. Uh, but yeah I mean with that yeah we man you and I've got some good launch pad ideas but you know maybe we can like post some random wallet address people can donate to us so that we can you know like take some time to build something valuable for this industry. But, uh, is that your is that your launch idea? Just a random address and people <laughs> throw you money. Yeah. That's gonna, how you I'm launch gonna, your project. <laughs> I'm gonna hard pivot into a Ben Daddy that's happening. No, no, no <laughs> I can't. I can't work with a Ben Daddy. <laughs> oh man, Saga.eth. Here we go, rug pull time. All right, guys. Well, thanks always for watching. Make sure you slap that like button. Um, and leave us some feedback. Like, let us know if there's something cool that you want us to check out. We don't necessarily have to look at projects that are launching soon. We can look at anything cool and break it down. So uh, we always appreciate the support. Sasha and Carmelo signing off. Thank you again. <laughs> <laughs>